So Steve Craw, you've been around the state, you've interviewed people at all levels, and uh, where does uh, having an interview with a hat collector rank among the people you've talked to this year? <laughs> well, I promise you I won't give you one or two word answers. It never hurts, it never helps to have one or two word answers when I'm talking to anybody. So I yeah, don't think I'm gonna have a problem giving you one or two answers, and I know you won't have one or two answers, words for me. <laughs> Well, the, the, the roles are kind of reversed here. Not that, not that I'm a big uh, interview target, but, uh, you know, I'm obviously a rookie here doing this, and I'm talking to a guy, Steve Craw, that has probably done uh, – actually, Steve and I, we've, we talked a little bit before this, and I think you're, you know, over 600 or something like that since you've been uh, doing this for Indiana RBI. What, what's your total at? Yeah, um, pressing in on 650. Well, it's, since, September, since uh, January 2017. <laughs> well, it's like I said earlier in, in the opening for this segment, uh, it's fitting that we wrap things up with you because, and Steve, I mean this with all sincerity, um, you cover baseball from, from the Ohio River to Lake Michigan and everything in between uh, better than anybody in the state and uh, couldn't be happier to have you on here. You know, as you go throughout 2019, you know, our topic here is top baseball stories in 2019. I know you've interviewed a ton of people. We could probably just talk about all the people you interviewed until a couple hour show. But, you know, thinking back over the last year, uh, one or two highlights of the interviews that you've done, uh, some, some interviews you've done that really were a good memory, a lot of fun, someone maybe that you've uh, been wanting to interview for a long time, finally got a chance to. Take us back to the, the year of Steve Craw. Uh, interviewing people across the state? Well, I had so many opportunities to, to talk to people, and I always say everybody has a story. I really enjoyed uh, talking with D.R. Miller. He uh, did not uh, serve in pro baseball this year for the first time in 51 years. He, he's from uh, southern Indiana, and he was with the Baltimore Orioles, and he coached with the uh, Astros and he was a uh, pitching coach with the uh, Angels and uh, just a lot of stories um, that he has to tell. That was, yeah. that was fun. Well, you know, and, uh, and I, I, I know, again, like I said, wrapping things up with you because there's uh, I've, if you see my Twitter page, I've, I've called you the encyclopedia of baseball for Indiana. And that is true. So in this session that we've had, in, in our, all the sessions of this uh, Top Stories of Baseball in Indiana, we've talked to, uh, we've covered Little League. We talked to the coaches for Brownsburg and Silver Creek. Of course, they were the two in the finals uh, last year for the Little League State Championship. Silver Creek coming away with their first ever crown. So congratulations again to them. Uh, we went to the high school ranks talking to Coach Jennings up at uh, Griffith High School, who also was the announcer for the uh, state finals last year. Um, he knows high school baseball as good as anybody in the state, so it was a pleasure talking to him. Uh, we talked to some of the minor league uh, teams across the state. So, Steve, let's, uh, we got a couple more areas here to wrap things up for the top stories of baseball in Indiana. We've got college baseball as well as the bigs. We've got a lot of uh, native Hoosiers in the uh, big leagues. Uh, where would you like to start, Steve? We've got college and we've got the major leagues. Uh, where are we going to take things here from your stories? Let's start with college. College? Well, there's, I'll tell you, as we're looking through our, our list here that you and I have talked about, you know, as going through this, there's a, a lot of great college stories this year. I think one of them is uh, many stories in and of itself is the uh, season that IU had. Yeah, absolutely. And Jeff Mercer Jr., his, his first year as a head coach, 2019, he came from Wright State. Uh, his Dad, Jeff Sr. was a, on the IU staff before, so he kind of grew up around that program, went to Franklin Community, and then he played at Dayton, and then he ended up at Wright State, and he made his uh, reputation as a coach at Wright State and ended up at IU. And in his first season, they won the Big Ten title. They won 37 games, uh, built it every bit about um, development and making everybody better. And he certainly helped the uh, power guys because they hit 95 home runs in 60 games. Yeah. Only Vanderbilt Vanderbilt won the College World Series had more than that. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, well, they had uh, – that wasn't their only record. I mean, that was a team record they had. I, I believe that was their team record for home runs in the year. 
They did pretty well with uh, uh, draftees this year, too. Yeah, they had 12 guys taken in the major league draft. So uh, a lot of a lot of cream and crimson up there in the pro ball, too. Well, I'll tell you, the uh, – so, I mean, they, they had a good season, and they're building for some future success here, too, not not counting the out-of-state recruits that they've uh, – they had signed committals for. They got some pretty good uh, – some Indiana boys uh, oh, yeah. this year that were seniors last year. A lot of them we saw in that state finals, you know. Um, saw them in the state finals or saw them the uh, North-South All-Star Series in Madison. Mm -hmm. Ethan Bacrumba of Edgewood, uh, Garrett Manis of Munster, Ryan Gaffney of Center Grove, Joe Wilkins of Providence, Dylan Steele of Bloomington North, Reese Sharp with lights out for uh, – yeah you know, for university in the state finals with 17 Ks. Mm -hmm. Jack Walker of New Palestine and uh, Tucker Shank of Southridge. That's just part of their class that uh, has uh, Indiana ties. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a who's who list right there. You know, as we uh, we leave Bloomington at IU and we head up toward Fort Wayne, a, uh, a just another great year for Indiana Tech. Yeah, Indiana Tech, uh, they're an NAIA school. And they went to the NAIA World Series this year. Uh, they are, are coached by uh, Kip McWilliams. Mm -hmm. And they were 42-16-1. and one. Mm -hmm. The Warriors did. They won the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference uh, regular season and tournament titles. And um, they hadn't been to the World Series, the NAIA World Series, which is in Idaho, since 2003. So very – Good season for them, and you, they're just loaded with Indiana players up and down yeah. their their yeah. roster. Yeah, they are. And I, I tell you, okay, I'll, I'm going to add a couple stories to this Indiana Tech season. They had just two fun ones. Number one, if if you follow Indiana Tech baseball on Twitter, or if you don't, you need to and scroll back to the end of the season last year when the uh, the final play that got them into the regionals. And uh, was a was a was a walk off. Well, it wasn't a walk off, but it was a, just a tremendous play. And they did the bench clearing pile as they go to the uh, uh, as they won the regionals. Just a celebratory pile, like you do at the end of a championship. And uh, one of their players brings their cell phone with him for this celebratory pile, and he's in the middle of the pile on this pile on. And it's just one of the, matter of fact, I, I responded to that quote on Twitter that said, everybody needs a moment in life like this. And one of their players, I don't, I'm not condoning this to the high school kids to bring your cell phone out for a celebratory pile, but uh, he brought it out and it was just one of the most fantastic scenes I've ever seen. You know, just kind of one of those feel good stories that was captured and luckily put on, put online for all people like me to enjoy. And then the other one, another feel-good story from Indiana Tech was uh, an Indiana Tech guy that didn't graduate this year, but Derek Morgan, you probably know the name I'm talking about. He was a 2015 Indiana Tech graduate. But uh, against a major league batter, he gave up, I think, 40-some dingers and just became famous overnight because of it. And, of course, I'm talking about him pitching to his cousin, uh, Pete Alonzo, the New York Mets, when they won the home run derby. So that's that's something we got to mention when we're talking about top stories out of Indiana. Oh, yeah, that's a very Tech cool guy. moment. Right, exactly. You know, Pete that, that, mo that moment you talked about with the, the dog pile, mm -hmm. um, I've come to find out about Indiana Tech uh, in going to a uh, clinic that Huntington North's been having a uh, yeah. hot stove this winter, and Kip McWilliams spoke. And he talked about in practice, they end a lot of their drills on a championship play or a game winner. That was a game winner. Yeah. So they practiced for that kind of moment. Yeah. And they celebrated like it is. So that wasn't the first time they did that. They did that over and over again during their practices. And I'll, I'll throw out another plug here for you, Steve, because you put a great article out about uh, – um, coach there um, recently, and um, he, he really gave a lot of in-depth um, overview of how he runs his practices. So if you haven't seen that article, make sure you go to indianarbi.com and search for that article. It's a great article given by the Indiana Tech coach. So we leave Fort Wayne, and I'll tell you, just before we leave Fort Wayne, shout out to all the Fort Wayne coaches. I got to meet them all this year, and just what a, and I'm, you know, some of the high school coaches as well, you know, um, and just such a close-knit group of coaches that uh, share a same bond. And I tell you, it's just a fun experience meeting those guys because they all know each other. It's really a, 
kind of a fraternity of coaching up there in that area. So uh, hats off to uh, those guys up there in Fort Wayne. So we leave Fort Wayne and we head back south of Indianapolis down to Franklin College. And uh, boy, they, they put together a, a great season themselves, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. Franklin College is a division, NCAA Division three school. And they went to the uh, regional in D3, and that's the deepest uh, that the Grizzlies have ever gone. And they were 31 and 15. Lance Marshall is the coach there at Franklin, and he's been there since the 98 season. And uh, they went, like I said, they went 31 games. They had a, that's, and they didn't have but maybe a one or two players that weren't from Indiana. So that's very much an Indiana team right there. Well, and I tell you what, that they're a testimony. There are so many good Division three programs across the state. Now, I'm not even going to mention because I'm going to I'm going to miss one or two. But uh, um, you know, all across, and even Southern Indiana, um, there's a handful of them. But you go east to west, north to south. There is some great Division three baseball across Indiana. So we go from Division three south of Indianapolis back to Division one over in Terre Haute. The Sycamores of ISU had another. Uh, had a great season, really a, a, a season of records for them too, just like IU. Yeah, they come uh, out of the gate at 16 and one, uh, and they were, ended up 43 and 18. They won the Missouri Valley Conference uh, tournament, and they earned a berth into the uh, NCAA's. They went to the Nashville Regional, and uh, the last team they lost to was Vanderbilt. No shame in that, because the Commodores. Uh, we're dogpiling in Omaha. So. Well, Coach Hannah's got a, a, a – Yeah, but Janice is doing a great job in Terre Haute. A lot of good future there. And, of course, you know, he's uh, – we're going to be talking about major leagues here in a minute, too, with a, a former Sycamore that was uh, returned to the A's this year. But uh, we'll get back to that. You know, we talked about some uh, feel-good stories with Indiana Tech as I'm looking through the list here that we talked about earlier. Um, another, uh, another Indiana guy – um, now gets the head job of a really a traditional powerhouse program. And, of course, I'm talking about Eric Wedge, a former, I think, a Fort Wayne guy, who's uh, now heading up with the Shockers over there in Wichita State. Yeah, people in Terre Haute will know about Eric Wedge because that's the Missouri Valley Conference in Wichita State. Uh, Eric Wedge, some people remember him from way back when he was at Fort Wayne Northrop playing for Chris Stavretti, and he's a, he's a Hall of Famer in Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, he went to Wichita State. He helped uh, the Shockers with Gene Stevenson win uh, the College World Series in 88 and 89. Went on to, as a catcher, went on to play in the big leagues. And then he was a manager with the Indians and the Mariners. And when he uh, got the call to come back to college ranks and at, at Wichita, he was with the Blue Jays in the player development side. Another good story. Like still comes back to Fort Wayne to run clinics for the Wildcat League and for the World Baseball Association. And he's very much uh, he hasn't forgot about his hometown by any means. Well, speaking of uh, of uh, schools getting good hires, uh, new coaching positions. You know, we've got uh, we've got a guy from uh, baseball royalty in Indiana, really. That uh, I, I think, of course, we're talking about Doug Schreiber, uh, the son of Ken Schreiber. I think this was such a great hire for Purdue for Fort Wayne. Um, a, just a fitting hire. You know, he comes from, uh, you know, he, he coached the Boilermakers, Purdue of Lafayette. Um, I think took him to a Big Ten title. Um, then from there, he was uh, having some success at McCutcheon's, which is a school outside of Lafayette. So, I mean, he's got Purdue in his blood. And uh, this pickup by Purdue Fort Wayne, I think, was a, a, a great hire to turn that program around. Absolutely, yeah. Doug Schreiber. You know, like you said, son of Ken Schreiber. Ken Schreiber, you know, is in 13 different Hall of Fames, uh, in, you know, including the Indiana Baseball Hall of Fame and National Hall of Fames. Won over 1,000 games, seven state titles at LaPorte. Um, of course, Doug played for him, and then he went to Purdue, and he was the coach, head coach there for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And then he coached at McCutcheon. Uh, and this was just a good fit for him to, yeah. to come to – Fort Wayne and uh, uh, make his mark on that program. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I think a, a good way to wrap up the uh, top college stories, and, and here's another good story that if you haven't seen it on, on social media, Twitter or Facebook, you need to follow the Butler baseball program because they just had a, a great feel-good 
commit this year. And of course, I'm talking about um, signing the uh, six-year-old leukemia survivor, uh, Micah Baeda. And I, I, I truly hope I'm pronouncing that right because just a just a great move by Butler Baseball. Oh yeah, that's that's just it's it's beyond baseball, right? I mean, they have the platform to do something like that. I mean, that's just kind of make that little boy, the family, everybody um, tied to that. Got to make them feel good. Uh, you know, hats off to if I can use your phrase to uh, Dave Schrag and his coaching staff for for deciding to do that. Yes, absolutely. Well, let's uh, as we wrap up college. And let's move to the bigs. Of course, you know, th this is my soapbox. Indiana doesn't have a major league baseball team, but we represent in the majors for sure. And we got some good stories this year. Let's start with where it all ended in the World Series. You know, we had some, uh, we had some players, uh, I think two Fort Wayne tin caps and a uh, Evansville Central guy that was in the World Series. That's right. Uh, Trey Turner and Joe Ross. Uh, we're in the World Series, and Aaron Barrett was quite a story, and he was on the World Series roster, and he's the Evansville Central guy. Uh, Aaron Barrett, he um, he was out of baseball, or at least out of the major leagues, for four years. Mm -hmm. He uh, Quite a story. He didn't, hadn't pitched since 2015. He broke the humerus bone in his right elbow, and uh, he had to learn how to pitch all over again. And, and and he got back to the big leagues. Quite a story, very emotional. Um, if you go, you know, Google any of the videos, you'll see that. And they had him throw out the first pitch when they play when the Nats played in the wild card game against the Brewers. So yeah, yeah. another good story. And he's uh, I, I saw online, and I don't know the exact details of it, but I think he's uh, running his first ever uh, pitching camp down in Southern Indiana, down there near Evansville. And I think some of the it's a it's charity based. Um, so great for him, uh, a feel-good story for sure. Um, but there were others, you know, not just the World Series. We had uh, more native Hoosier boys in the playoffs. You know, we, we talked earlier about uh, Coach Annis at ISU, one of those, well, I, well, one from ISU, but two from Indiana represented with the A's this year. Yeah, yeah, Sean, Sean Manaya, left-handed pitcher. Uh, some call him the throwing Samoan. Mm -hmm. um, he came, he came back from an injury. He hadn't pitched in about a year. Yeah. And he came off of surgery, had left soldier surgery, came back with Oakland, was um, activated on September 1st, and he went 4-0 uh, and in September with a 1.21 ERA. He struck out about a bad inning. He pitched 29 two-thirds innings. Well, and he started the wild card season. game against the Rays. Yeah. So that's a real good, real good story. He, he started his – High school career at South Central and finished it at Andran. Yep, and boy, when he hit the big leagues, he hit it quick and fast. He became a name quick, so that's uh, good to see. Like you said, a South started out at South Central, then went to Andran, uh, then on with the, at ISU before now he's making a name for himself. He continues to with the A's. Good to see him back from that um, injury. There's another A's uh, catcher, uh, an Indiana boy. I was I was hoping we'd see a, a, an all Indiana battery there in the playoffs. It didn't happen. But uh, of course, I'm talking about Josh Fagley. Yeah, Josh Fagley pitched at Terre Haute North and uh, and then at IU and uh, been with several uh, teams in the big leagues, including mm -hmm. the White Sox. And he uh, played for the Oakland A's. He caught some pitches from uh, Manaya, so you had an all Indiana battery right there. We're going to talk about that here in a second. I want to, I want to challenge you on this, if you know your Indiana batteries from 2019 here in a minute. And, of course, we talked about Aaron Barrett, the uh, Evansville Central guy that uh, played for the Nationals. But the Rays had a couple guys, too, that are uh, native Hoosiers. Yeah, Kevin Kiermeyer in center field, and he's uh, one of the highlight reels on, you know, out there with his uh, ability to run and jump and, and to throw. And he's also a pretty good clutch left-handed hitter. And Michael Brasso, uh, another Andrean guy, he made his major league debut this year, and he's uh, he's he played all over the place, but he played mostly second base and third base. He did play some in the outfield, so that's uh, one of three guys from Indiana who made their uh, big league debuts this year. Well, and of course, you know we're still just we're just talking about the playoffs. You know, players from Indiana that were in the playoffs at this point. Of course, the Twins 
had another guy, another uh, Greenfield Central guy. Yeah, uh, Kyle Gibson. He uh, he he went to Greenfield Central and in, in Missouri, and he was uh, in the off season here. He went into the Missouri Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and he he helped the Twins get to the postseason here in the post. Uh, here after the season, he's he's now a Texas Ranger, but he mm -hmm. helped the Twins. As a part of their uh, as part of their postseason run. Well, like I said earlier, that that was just the playoffs. There's some other players, uh, another more Indiana guys that uh, made their impact in the major leagues. Starting with, uh, you know, I'm a Reds guy. There was there was a Reds guy that debuted this year that uh, an Indiana boy that did pretty good. Yeah, that's Josh Van Meter. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh Van Meter went to Norwell. Uh, he played his first big league game in May. Uh, he's a left-handed hitter. He hit uh, 237 at eight home runs and 23 RBIs. And he played all over the diamond. Uh, he played first base, second base, third base, left field, right field. He played most of the time in, in left field. I think he considers himself a second baseman. And they got well, a pretty good one there in Cincinnati. So you know, he's, he's happy to play where he can. And uh, he played on a, a state championship team at, at Norwell. Um, one of the things I always will think about him, I got to see him in a game-winning home run in the regional at Belmont. And the other thing is that when he was a Class A ball player, he had a bobblehead. <laughs> That's how popular he is in Fort Wayne. Of course, he played travel ball with the uh, Summit City Sluggers, and, and Norwell is just outside of Fort Wayne. So that's how well they think. Well, and, and Fort Wayne people love their baseball. That is a baseball city for sure. You know, we talked about uh, Michael Brasso with the Rays. Uh, we've got another uh, – uh, a pretty famous last name here, Zach Plesak, with the Indians. Yeah, Zach Plesak uh, played his high school ball at Crown Point, mm -hmm. uh, played at Ball State. Um, Dan Plesak is on the MLB Network and had a long uh, career as a pitcher, mostly out of the bullpen. That's his uncle. Um, and, and Dan Plesak is, through marriage, is, is, uh, is related to uh, other than uh, Dave Pitcher, who's the Andrea coach, yeah. put that in there for free. But uh, Dan, uh, Plesak, he's a hard thrower. He's right-handed. He was eight and six, and uh, had a three eight one ERA this year. He had eighty eight strikeouts in a, this a little over one hundred fifteen innings. So yeah. he, and we, uh, we definitely haven't heard the last of him. That's that's. that's going oh to no, be. absolutely not. Yep. Now we talked about uh, Shamanaya. We talked about Aaron Barrett. We talked about Kiermaier. A couple more here. Uh, one of them outside of Major League Baseball, but luckily we're going to get to see him come back here in the States because I'm talking about uh, Josh Lindblom. Oh, yeah, Josh Lindblom. Uh, Sorry. He, yeah, he, he has uh, played for several teams in the big leagues, and then the last few years he's been in Korea, mm -hmm. and not just in Korea. Uh, last two years he was 35-7 and seven with yeah, a 2.16 error A, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, he's six five. He's right-handed. Um, he won the Korean Baseball Organization's uh, Cy Young Award the last two years. The, uh, their equivalent of that, uh, Americans or non-Koreans couldn't win it until the last two years. So he won it both times. He could win it. He was also the uh, MVP of the league. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the off season, he signed with a three-year deal with the Milwaukee Brewers. Yep, and uh, I'm you know 32 years old. NL Central guy. I'm an Indiana guy, so that's a that's a win win for me. I'm going to root for him on every game that he's not playing the Reds. <laughs> so, you know, and like I said, being a Reds guy, we can't have a you know I'm going to put in my bias here. We can't have a, a a story on baseball about Indiana without bringing up some kind of Tucker Barnhart story. You know, I'm sitting here in Brownsburg, Indiana, diehard Reds fan, and luckily for me, we've got a we've got a Tucker Barnhart story here winning the Joe Nuxall Good Guy Award. And that is a, that's an award for the, the Cincinnati chapter of the uh, Baseball Writers Association. Um, and Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, you know, it's not at the level, obviously, of like the Roberto Clemente Award, which I'll just a side note on that. Tucker was the Cincinnati Reds representative for the Roberto Clemente Award last year, 2018. Um, which that's good to hear. Uh, the Roberto Clemente Award, uh, the person that gets that for every team across Major League Baseball 
uh, just perfectly represents what to me baseball should be about from start to finish. And, uh, you know, I've, that's a year late, but I want to congratulate Tucker for winning that. But this year, the Joe Nuxall Award, that's a that's a, a, a good award in and of itself where he is really representing the Cincinnati Reds within that Cincinnati community. Yeah, I think that's a combination of community service, which he does, and he also uh, he doesn't go hide uh, uh, good good or bad game. Uh, he doesn't go hide in the training room. He's there for the press. This is an award that the uh, the writers and the and the uh, on air people give their uh, most people from Indiana that are of a certain age will know Joe Nuxall was with Marty Brennan for for years and. He came up with the Cincinnati Reds in the 40s during World War II when he was 15 years old. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then he came up a little later after the war and he, and he had a big league career. But, you know, they always talked about the old left-hander and he was a left-handed pitcher. But, um, yeah, Joe there's, Nuxall there's a, was – Kind of a feel good story kind of there thing. too. He was very good with the press and he was a very good uh, with the community. He thought very highly of and So I think that's why the Reds uh, named that award for him. Yep. And I, I believe, and I'll, I'll let the viewers, you know, Google this to find the whole story about him, but I, I, I believe he's also still the uh, the youngest person in Major League Baseball history to at least throw one pitch in a baseball game, because you're talking about, like, you know, the yeah, 15, 15 years, years old. old. I mean, there's been some, um, Bob Feller was step 17, and, and there's been some young guys, but mm -hmm. uh, 15, wow. Yep. Even even if that was like 1944 during the war, that's, that's still pretty impressive. So congratulations, Tucker, on winning that again. And I'll just throw out there from a from a fan, welcome back to Twitter, Tucker. <laughs> so we go from uh, players in the major leagues, but there's some news with uh, native Hoosiers uh, with coaching transactions in the major leagues as well, starting off with a, a Notre Dame guy up there in Milwaukee that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, that's right. Um, Craig Council went to Notre Dame. He was actually born in South Bend because his, you know, his, parents or his father is an Notre Dame guy and uh, he's from Milwaukee so he's back in his his uh, hometown uh, managing and he got a uh, he was second in the National League manager of the year uh, and of course the the Brewers went to the playoffs mm -hmm. the uh, NL manager of the year was was Mike Schilt for the Cardinals but uh, Craig Council and Craig Council, I one of the things I remember about him was him scoring the winning run for the Marlins, you know, 20 years ago in the World Series. Yeah. Just a great pure hitter, and uh, I, I think this this guy's got a future. Uh, right? I think that uh, he had held the bat high and up over his <laughs> you know, way, you know, very unique batting style. He was a pretty yep. clutch hitter, obviously. The uh, I believe you know you said he got uh, second, I believe, in in uh, the the. Yeah, was second in the uh, you know yeah. manager of the year. Some of them might have, in some of them might have said he was the manager of the year. He he did was second in the voting. Yep, and I think two years in a row. If, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but two years in a row he's finished second place there, which uh, that's a uh, quite the feat. You know, moving from him, we got uh, Mr. Donnie Baseball himself. Um, made a uh, made a move with the Marlins again. Yeah, the the Marlins showed uh, their faith in, uh, in Don Mattingly, Evansville native. Uh, he signed a two year contract with the Miami Marlins mm -hmm. as their manager. Um, he's been a manager with Chris with the with the Dodgers uh, in this 2016 in Miami, and uh, he's won. Uh, 722 games so he's going to surpass the I don't think he's going to get 800 this year but he's going to come close yeah. well and it's it's good to see you know he's down there in Miami he hasn't put a lot of great seasons together but they cleaned house there a year or so ago and you know now they got a, a pretty famous guy at the helm there that's uh, not not afraid to spend some money so I, I think we can keep an eye on Don Mattingly there I think he's going to uh I think he's got some years ahead of him there with some success down in Miami. Right. I mean, Derek Jeter's like the face of the ownership group there, and they, they showed faith in, in that Don Maddox. Yep. And going with him, you know, we've got uh, back up north to Chicago, another uh, Indiana guy uh, making the moves in the scouting ranks with the White Sox. Yeah. Uh, Mike Shirley is the uh, 
now he was just promoted here in August. He's the director of amateur scouting for the White Sox. He's he's an Anderson guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, before he was in this position, he was an area scout. Uh, and then he was the assistant of a uh, scouting director. And he he's known uh, around not just Anderson, but around Indiana as um, running the barn, which is a, a mm -hmm. Yeah. an instructional facility and people just rave about him as a especially as a hitting instructor but just as a just as an instructor in general mm -hmm. and he says he's always going to be involved with that just, uh no matter what else other roles are in baseball i tell you that's that's a guy that i'd like to see uh someone who knows how to interview someone unlike me <laughs> i'd like to see a uh, steve Craw get an interview with that guy if you haven't already because the, the science of scouting has changed so much in the last Oh yeah, I, I got to talk to him. That was, that was another one of, I, I've been trying to talk to him for a few years and it just uh, finally worked out. Uh, mm -hmm. He is very, uh, was a very busy guy for one thing. He's pretty low key, but he was very uh, forthcoming about a lot of things. And that was very interesting. Uh, and his, he's got three sons that play and Jackson was, um, was the oldest one and he was, um, drafted by the White Sox, didn't sign. He was briefly, uh, he was briefly at uh, Oklahoma, and now he's at Lubbock Christian. Okay. So he probably get uh, drafted again this year. So you can see why I call this guy the Encyclopedia of Baseball here in Indiana. So Steve, as we wrap things up here, talking about the top stories of baseball in Indiana, let's have a little fun. I'm going to try to stump you on a couple things. The first one. You know, we talked earlier about uh, all Indiana batteries, so I'm going to try to stump you on some all Indiana batteries here. And, and what made me think of this is uh, a couple years ago, I'm at a uh, Cincinnati Reds versus New York Yankees game over in Cincinnati, and not only did I get to witness firsthand a all Indiana battery, but an all Brownsburg Indiana battery. Of course, I'm talking about Drew Storen was pitching to Tucker Barnhart, another shameless Tucker Barnhart plug there. Uh, two Brownsburg graduates pitching and catching for the Reds. So let's look at 2019. I went back and I did a little research and I found two legitimate all Indiana batteries that happened this year. And then one, it's kind of a stretch, but we're going to, we're going to call it an Indiana battery. So I'm going to challenge you here, Steve. And uh, looking back on 2019, can you, how many of these all Indiana batteries can you name? Okay, well, a little while ago we were talking about the Oakland A's in the in the playoffs. So that's uh, Sean Manaya, and he's from Northwest Indiana, and Josh Fegley from Terre Haute. Yep. So that's that's one. Yep, that was the uh, that was the playoff battery I was hoping to happen, but it, it didn't happen. Of course, Sean Manaya, like you said, he started for the playoffs with the A's, and uh, didn't happen with Fegley. So that there's one. And then uh, there's another one here, another kid you mentioned. One of them you didn't mention. Let's see if you can get the second one. Another Northern okay. Indiana guy. Well, we talked about uh, Zach Plesak, who was a Ball State guy, Crown Point guy who made his major league debut. And he got to pitch to uh, Kevin Ploiecki. <laughs> okay, I, I knew you would have got those two. You got, uh, you got Manaya and Fegley, and then you got uh, Plesak and Ploiecki. That's hard to say. Um, this third one, it's kind of a stretch. So let, let's uh, let's see if you can do this third one now. And I say it's a stretch, and I'll give you a little bit of hint. Probably don't, not needed, but uh, the the pitchers and there's two pitchers in this and one catcher. The pitchers were not born in Indiana, but they have Indiana ties. Okay. And the and the catcher, and this is why it's even more of a stretch. Now the catcher was born in Indiana, but he moved away kind of quick. He was, uh, I think he moved to Florida. He didn't go to school here, but he was born in Indiana. So it, it's, it fits. <laughs> right. Well, um, the catcher happens to be one of those uh, catchers or players whose father also played in the big leagues. <laughs> so that's Drew Butera. His father, Sal, was a big leaguer. Yeah. I don't know if you're Googling this or not, but it's pretty impressive. Colorado Rockies this year. <laughs> so what color? Are there any Colorado ties Rockies. to Indiana oh, from the Rockies? What's that? Are there any ties to Indiana from the Rockies? you got to know that. Yeah, yeah. The Purple Aces, Evansville. 
Kev, yep. Kyle Freeland mm -hmm. and David Deal. They both they both played in the uh, University of Evansville. Yeah, I, I can't stump you. I, I, as hard as I try, I can't stump you. The reason that was a stretch, you know, of course, you got Butera, who was born in Indiana, but moved away, you know, rather soon. You got Deal and Freeland, who were not born in Indiana, but played for Evansville. They were aces, like you mentioned. Okay, I couldn't stump you on that, but I'm Hardy the Hat guy, so I think I can stump you on this. And what we've been doing with all these other segments, with the Little League, you know, uh, the high school and the semi-pros and everybody else, um, I have have going to challenge you with a five questions on name the hat. So hat question number one, you have two hats with a J on there. One of them, now, you know what? I'm not even gonna give you a hint because I bet you're gonna know both of these without me even giving you a hint. So let's go without a hint first. On the left is Jim Town, <laughs> on the right is Jasper. Yeah. Well, bonus points, not that you need them. Do you know their mascots? The Jimmies and the Wildcats. Yeah, that, uh, I, I figured you'd know that one. Of course, the Jimmies, one of the iconic uh, mascots from Indiana. Question number two. Now, this is a trick question. For everybody else, it was. For Steve Craw, it's probably not going to be. But of the four hats you see right there, only one of them has an active baseball team. Only one of the teams represented by the four hats you see here, only one of them has an active baseball team. Can you name that one team? Or at least show me the hat. Well, we're going to go by the letter of the law here. And the left, upper left-hand corner of that B is the Brooklyn Dodgers. Brooklyn Dodgers, Indiana ties right there. You got Carl Orson. Indiana ties for sure. Yep. Uh, and then right across from that, or right to the other, uh, candy corner from that is Holy Cross. Mm -hmm. And that's at Notre Dame, Indiana. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, they don't have a team anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the lower left is Bethel College. Mm -hmm. And Bethel College changed their name last fall to Bethel University. Mm -hmm. So I guess they don't. I guess that means the Cascade Cadets. <laughs> CC up in the the Columbia Blue up there. That, I guess that's the answer. Encyclopedia de Baseball. That is for sure. You got you got that right. There's only one team on there that has an active baseball team. The top right, that is the Cascade Cadets. The other three, of course, Brooklyn Dodgers became the LA Dodgers. Bethel College became Bethel University. And unfortunately, uh, Holy Cross no longer has a baseball team anymore to the chagrin of Coach Woodridge at Ancilla. And you're going to know these. I probably shouldn't even give you a hint. These are two Northern Indiana schools. Without a hint, who are the two LCs right here? You got Lacrosse on the left and Lake Central on the right. Too easy, too easy for Steve Craw. Let's move right along. Now this one might be a little tough one. I could have put four hats up here. I think I got four or five that are just straight S. Two schools right here. One of them's one of, if not the, I know one of the uh, oldest public schools in Indiana and the other one is a uh, school, uh, let's say, uh, uh, north central Indiana, kind of around uh, west of Fort Wayne there a little bit. I'm giving you hints. Why am I giving Steve Craw hints? You're going to know who these two are. <laughs> the blue one, the, the blue S, that is Short Ridge, Minneapolis. Yep. And the other one is Southwood, which is right, right outside of Wabash. Too easy, too easy, too easy. All right. Hopefully we can stump you on this one. Now, what you see before you is only one Major League Baseball hat. The other three are Indiana High School baseball hats. Can you name first which one is the Major League Baseball hat? That would be the C in the lower right-hand corner. That's where Zach Plesak and Nick Wickren, Cleveland Indians. Yep, that is for sure. And if you got that one so quick, you probably know the other three, I'm guessing. The upper left is Blackford. Tony Ugin, who's going yeah. into the Indiana Baseball Hall of Fame. He's right. head coach uh, there. You got uh, the P is the Tigers of Peru. That's Chuck Brimberry's the coach. Chuck Brimberry, my old assistant football coach back in just a quick Peru story. Coach Brimberry was my assistant football coach back in high school. I'm aging myself there a little bit and him. Sorry, Chuck. 
And uh, their announcer there at Purdue Stadium, or Peru Stadium, just a great stadium, by the way. Their announcer there is uh, Mike Stewart, who was my head football coach back in my old glory days at South American High School. So we got the – who's so the bottom the is, is tied to everybody. That's, you, everybody's tied to everybody in some way. So, yeah. so. so we've got three of them there. We know that bottom left one is not the Washington Nationals. Who is that? That was the – IHSA state finalists this year, Randy Roberts, Washington Township Senators. Yep, another great, great uh, season they had. I was lucky to uh, meet him this year before they ran into that juggernaut named His son Max plays in the Mariners organization. Yeah, yep. Well, I, I tried, Steve. I, I, I tried with the uh, baseball batteries, and I tried with the uh, name of the hat. I can't stump Steve Crawl nor should I think I even had a chance because Steve Cron, I really mean this, as we wrap things up with the top stories out of baseball in Indiana for 2019, first of all, I want to thank you for not only joining me here, entertaining a hat collector for this series and everybody else who jumped in here with me. This has been a ton of fun. But I want to thank you personally for uh, all, the, all the hard work you put in throughout the year, uh, just really being an ambassador for baseball and amateur sports in general. I know you do more than just baseball, but me being just a big baseball fan that I am, speaking for, uh, I think I can fairly speak for all the baseball fans across Indiana and all the coaches. Uh, we really appreciate your hard work and commitment you do to, uh, to really uh, promoting amateur baseball across Indiana, but not just amateur baseball. You, you do all these stories, like this whole series that we've done here on Top Stories of Baseball in Indiana, you're doing that 365 days a year, and, and uh, I really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to some uh, more great work from your uh, magical pin that you do there at indianarbi.com. As we look back, Steve, if you're thinking about 2019 top stories of baseball in Indiana, what stands out for Steve Crawl? Dylan Weldy. That was one of my that was one of my favorite stories this year. Was Dylan Weldy. Dylan Weldy was the manager at Northwood High School in Appanee. Mm -hmm. And his coach, uh, A.J. Reisdorf, he petitioned the Coaches Association to see if Dylan could be the manager in the All-Star Series. Mm -hmm. And Dylan has had some physical um, issues during his life, his heart and, and his spine and everything like that. He wasn't able to play sports after about junior high, but been very much into it as a manager and, and, uh, and things. So um, very, very much thought, highly thought of by all his teammates, his classmates, everything. Well, not only did they welcome with him and with open, open arms down there at the All-Star Series, he got to play. He got to get into the game. So he, he, he never played high school baseball. He got to be a pinch, pinch runner. And, I mean, the smile on your face, I, I bet it's still on there now. You could wipe it off. Uh, that was really cool. He was supposed to go on to uh, IU East, which is in Richmond, and be the, the manager on the basketball men's basketball team there and, uh, and a student. So that was a really neat story. I went to – to uh, the family farmhouse and talk to him and his 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 mother and and yeah, that was just a very cool story. Well, I, I tell you that that is a perfect way to wrap up this show because as as we looked from little league all the way to the big leagues and everything in between, the the best part about baseball is the stories and baseball people. You know, I was talking with, uh, you know, all the people I got was blessed to, to meet and speak with throughout the year. One of the guys I was talking with was Coach Hershberger up at Ivy Tech Fort Wayne, which it's, I just think it's fantastic that Ivy Tech has a baseball team now. But, you know, one of the things we were talking about is just one of the great things of baseball is baseball people, you know, and very generally stated that there's just something special about baseball people. And it's that story. I think it's just the humbling nature of baseball by itself. The greatest players who ever played the game failed seven out of ten times. You can't be too, talk, too, too cocky and play baseball. So you get stories that leads to that humility, that greatness of baseball, leads to stories like this like you just told, Steve. And, 
um, as we wrap up 2019, folks, I appreciate those of you who uh, stuck with us and watched this story, watched me stumble through it. I'm, you know, I'm doing this just for fun, like I mentioned, and I'm, I'm a big fan of people like Steve Craw who do this and do it right. And uh, looking forward to 2020, uh, some great things in store from the college ranks to the big leagues, all the way down to the little leagues. I love every part of it. Somebody once asked me, was it really special to see this, you know, this big name? Sure it is. But Steve, I'm sure you can attest that I like meeting the people that are just starting out and have that special story to the people who've made it big and everything in between. It's the special story of baseball. And Steve, I appreciate you telling it the way you do. And coaches, thank you for uh, taking the time to entertain a hat guy throughout the year. I haven't quit bugging you yet, and I'll probably keep bugging you. I'm going to see you at the Indiana High School Baseball Coaches Association Clinic in January. Steve, we'll probably see. Are you going to be there as well? Yes, sir. All right. And I know you're going down to the ABCA Clinic down in Tennessee uh, next week or, uh, or shortly after um, as the time. That's right, next Tennessee. week in Nashville. Yep. So, folks, like I've always said, Indiana, yeah, we're a corn state. We're a basketball state. We're also a baseball state. See you in 2020. Thank you.